focus, focus, focus. <laughs> okay, finally. So, if you guys are watching this video, then it means that you, you want to know about me. And yeah, that's why I'm here because I know about me more than anybody else knows about me. Right? Right. So, <laughs> Um, on my Facebook, I posted, you know, I was starting this channel and I wanted to know like what questions you guys want to, you know, ask so I can answer for you. And uh, I got them right here. So brief explanation before I get these questions. Um, I'm 21. Uh, my name is Jasmine, if hopefully you got that from my username. Um, 21. I am in the military, but we're not really going to talk about that. Uh, I currently live in Guam. It's a little island in the Pacific. I'm black, mixed with black, and a little bit of extra black. I uh, grew up in Georgia. I'm just going to get right into these questions because I don't want to be here all day. Um, first question, what made you want to join the military? Well, I joined the military right out of right out of high school. Well, I took like a year off, but I joined basically right out of high school. And I joined because I felt like my entire life was planned for me. Like you're gonna go to school, and when you go to school, you're gonna go to college, and you finish college, you're gonna do something with your degree that you think you're supposed to do, and then you might get married, and then you might have a kid or two, and then you know, it's I just felt like it was very typical, and I'm not a typical person, so I wanted to do something just slightly outside of the box. So one day I was just like, Well, let's go talk to a recruiter. So I went and talked to the recruiter, and here I am. <laughs> Basically, here I am. Um, I joined in 2014. I've been in almost like two years and some change. And so far, like, how do I put this? <laughs> um, so far, I enjoy it. I mean, of course, the only other jobs that I've ever had were like a fast food job, you know, something a, a normal teenager would do. So it was a big change for me, like culturally, socially, dealing with these people who I never thought I would have to deal with. But overall, I've so far I've enjoyed it. I've been to maybe six or seven countries so far. Um, let me see, Timor Leste, it's a little island next to Indonesia, or not island, little country next to Indonesia. I've been in Indonesia, Malaysia, um, Vietnam, the Philippines, I'm in Guam right now. It's a U.S. territory, but it's overseas. So, wait, so Timor, Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, the Philippines, Guam, and Japan. I've been to Japan. Loved Japan. So, yeah, like seven countries, and I don't regret any of it. I mean, it's it's been amazing. Um, if you guys want, I can do like a little, like a little talk about, um, all the, you know, how I, how I, it's, enjoyed those countries but um yeah that's why i joined just to get another a different perspective of the world and so far that's you know that's been perfect
Is it lonely being away from home for so long or do I not have any problems with it? Guam is 7,986 miles away. Not to be specific. At first, it was really difficult. It was, you know, I got I got here in like August and it was okay for a little bit and then of course the holidays come around because they always do. It's just, it's an adjustment. It's all it is is an adjustment. I mean, if you, if you, um, if you go to college away from home, then you'll understand like being away from home, it's kind of something, it, it's gonna happen eventually. And you know, you just kind of get used to it. So is it lonely? Sometimes it gets lonely, but I try to go home every couple of months just to see my family or whatever. And I have some family who comes out here sometimes. So it's, it kind of, I get used to it. What time did I find out my passion for makeup? And who were the people who inspired me to branch out in fashion and makeup and blah, blah, blah. So makeup, well, if anybody out here knows, you know, who are like or makeup enthusiasts like I am, it is trial and error, okay? It's been years of mismatched eyebrow eyebrows and the wrong color foundation and you know it's it's a learning process. And when I first came to the island, of course like I said, you know, you're almost eight thousand miles away from home, so all you really have to do or for me, all I had to do was sit in my room and practice. And as all I ever did was I would sit here and I would just play on makeup and sometimes it looks really, really bad, but sometimes it'll look really good. And if you do it for long enough, I mean, it gets, it gets easier. Who are the people who inspired you? Um, I don't know. I just really wanted to not be a little boy anymore because, you know, I just, I just want to be cute. So that's basically what inspired me to, you know, keep up with my makeup. Um, I love Instagram. I'm, I hate how much social media influences what I do. But I will spend hours watching like YouTube videos and like scrolling through Instagram trying to figure out, oh, how can I do this? How can I do that? Um, she looks really good. I wonder if I can recreate it or put my own twist to it. And you know that that helps too. And it's, especially if you want to keep like if you want to kind of expand your makeup skills watching other people is like key you'll you won't be as good as they are initially but if you just keep trying and like i said practice and practice it's just gonna come easy so that's another good motivation who are your top five all-time favorite music artists <sighs> okay so i'm gonna try not to like go off on a tangent here. So I'm just gonna say, well top five, right? Top five? Ooh, okay. Number one, FK Twigs. If you follow me anywhere, you know that that is Bay. okay? I love FK Twigs. Her artistry, her style, her weirdness, her everything is just amazing and I love her. She's, she's like, that's my girl. Um, number two, huh, am I gonna get emotional? <laughs> James Blake. I absolutely love, love James Blake. He recently had a concert in Georgia and I was here. I was here and you know, it. I love him so much. It took me a minute to be, even be able to watch the videos of him performing because I was so emotional that I was not there. I love him. I feel like he's like the male version of Twigs. Like he's his style, he's very like confident in his style and it's, you know, it's weird, but he, his voice, his, okay, I love him. I love James Blake, I'm not gonna go there. So, <laughs> Submotion Orchestra. So, Submotion Orchestra is like, they're, they're like a UK band. I don't think he's from the UK. I need to move to the UK. But um, Submotion Orchestra is like a UK band and they're kind of like, they're a mix of jazz and also dubstep and then Ruby Wood, the, the singer, her voice is golden. So you put all this together and you get this magical sounds of things that are pleasing to your ears. <laughs> like I can't even describe it. I first found them when I came here actually and I was just listening to them on Pandora and I was like, oh, this is a nice song. Let me check out the other songs. Little did I know. Little did I know that my life will be changed forever. Oh, how can I forget? <laughs> Hiatus Coyote. They are, actually they're Australian, they're not from the UK, they're Australian. And they, 
they're like jazzy, but different. I can't describe it. Um, yeah, Night Home and Hiatus Coyote, they are amazing. I went to their concert in May, last May, and it was amazing. I even got a picture with her. I did, I know. And I just really enjoy their, their sound and their feel, and I love them. Kalayla. You guys probably know Kalayla. She is bad as hell. I love me some Kalayla. Um, Kalayla is awesome. She's also, she's kind of more like on the R&B slash electronic side. And her voice, of course, is amazing. I love her, the, her music videos. Um, and I love her beats. Her beats, I think her beats, her tracks are what makes her music like pop because you put like this soft, easy on the ears voice with these hard like trap dubstep beats and it just kind of throws it off but it's like in a good way so I love Kalita. So well my favorite genre, um, I just want to say R&B and electronic but put together. Like separately it's like eh, whatever but put together R&B and electronic I think it's amazing. Like look at Twigs, James Blake, Kalayla, they're all kind of on the R&B side but with you know like it's just like an electronic feel. I love tracks. Like, I'm a sucker for tracks. You don't even have to have words in your music, but if I can feel it, like the bass in my heart, then yeah, I will listen to it. Um, also, like, I love jazz. Like, I love jazz music. It just is. Maybe it's because my name is Jasmine, or maybe it's because it's awesome, which I'm pretty sure both are accurate. But I love me some jazz music. Any kind of jazz, like electronical jazz, submotion orchestra, um, classical jazz, um, just all of the above. I love jazz music. So those are like, I guess those are like my two favorite genres. Um, oh, hobbies. Well, if you didn't notice, I am surrounded by these paintings, kind of. Um, I am an artist. I love painting. Well, I'm slowly getting into painting again. I, you know, it's it's not my prime. Oh, focus. Okay, it's not my like my prime hobby, but I love. I'm just good at it, so I do it every once in a while. But I paint. I draw. I write. I writing is my is in my heart. I um have three books so far. Well, two finished, two completely finished books, and I'm in the middle of writing the third one. Um, it's all a it's all of a series. I'm hoping to get it published soon. I'm procrastinating because it's my baby, and I'm not ready to see my baby off in the world yet. But make doing hair, makeup. That's really that's really it. Am I a gamer? No, I'm not really a gamer. I have a Nintendo DS and I play Pokemon a lot. But gaming wise, like, you know, gaming wise, I just could never get into it. And I'm not really a big gamer, but I love my DS and I play Pokemon all the time. Go Sun and Moon. <laughs> so, my favorite anime. Well, I love anime. Like, I love manga. I love anime. I love. I don't want to sound like a. A weeb. I love Japanese culture. I I just do. But favorite anime. I grew up watching Naruto as a lot of people have. As 15 years of <laughs> oh my god, this sounds so embarrassing. It's 15 years of giving my life to this show. I've realized that there's so many other good anime out there, but that was my, I guess I can say just because of the history I have with it, that Naruto was my favorite. I also grew up watching Bleach, but I kind of stopped because I don't know why, but I, I grew up watching Bleach in One Piece, of course. Um, I, Sailor Moon, you guys know I freaking love Sailor Moon. If you've seen my Sailor Moon cosplay, then yeah, I'm um, definitely going to insert a picture of that. I love Sailor Moon. Grew up watching Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon. I love the whole girl power aspect of it. I love everything about it. Okay, it's just amazing. I I love Hunter x Hunter. It is. You think it's like this kid's childish anime, but then once you start reading it, you realize that 
it is ridiculously crazy. I laugh, I cry, I cried a lot actually. Hunter x Hunter is amazing. Am I religious or not? I am not religious. I grew up on Christianity, you know, we, uh, my family and I, we always go to a Christian church. Um, I guess growing up, I never really felt a connection to Christianity or religion at all, actually. Um, I can't really explain why, I just, I don't think it's, I just don't think it's something for me. Like, I definitely a spiritual, spiritual person. Um, I like being in the presence. Okay, story time. Um, when I was in Vietnam, they had this giant Lady Buddha statue. And I think that the, because the, the primary religion in Vietnam is Buddhism. So they had this giant Lady Buddha statue. And we hiked up this mountain to get to this statue. And, you know, there, was, there were temples, temples there and people just praying on like through around the entire area and like I said I don't really feel connected to a specific religion but I think being in that area where I could just feel like the, I could feel the energy I could feel how strongly these people felt just you know praying and being there and I felt the same thing you know I was actually getting emotional I I'm just an emotional person, like, but like just just being there, I just I thought it was so beautiful. And I feel like situations like that, like that's, I feel like that's when I feel closest to any religion of some kind. So. I'm not really religious specifically, but I can definitely respect other religions and like other practices. How do you feel or how do you practice self-love and boost your confidence? So that's a, that's a great question. So I, there's this quote that I've seen multiple places, but I constantly have to remind myself of it. And it's someone else's beauty is not the absence of your own. And I interpret that as being you know, of course, in the era of social media, you can scroll, 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 watch all these videos of these people with their perfect lives and their perfect dogs and their perfect spouses and their perfect life and hair and, you know, just you, they just look perfect. But I think you have to remind yourself, and I constantly remind myself that you're watching them through, you're watching them through a phone, you're watching them through a laptop or a television screen. So what you see is, is very one dimensional and what they project on these, on these platforms, it's, you can't assume that they're perfect because everyone has a life outside of social media. Everyone has a life outside of these, outside of these social media platforms. So I think you can't constantly compare yourself to someone that you see on, like on the internet because you don't really know their life completely. So to boost my confidence, one, I had to remind myself of that because I can spend days just scrolling and be like, oh, I want to be like her. I want her hair and I want her makeup skills and I want this and I want that and I want this. So it's sometimes you got to take a step back and just be like, hey, why don't you just be the best version of yourself? And I think, wow, that sounds so corny. It's like a fortune cookie. But seriously, like you have to just don't compare yourself to other people because it's toxic and you'll never be happy. you never be happy because there's always going to be someone who's better than this person that you made yourself out to be. So just be yourself, everyone. Be yourself, okay? Because there is no one else like you unless you have a twin and they're probably still not like you. But yeah, just be yourself and that's how I boost my confidence. Um, when I want to, when I need to pick me up, I'll buy new hair or I'll do my makeup and just take pictures and then go to sleep because sometimes I just need to feel cute. But just little things like that. Just do things that, you know, make you feel good about yourself, but don't compare yourself to someone else because it won't make you happy. As a black woman abroad, how do you feel or how do you deal with the cultural differences you come in contact with? Um, well, I, 
re well not recently I've in this era of social media I've grown to my knowledge of the world has expanded I don't want to say a lot but enough for me to see the world with like a different set of eyes and in doing so you pick up on things that you never really picked up on before and just me being a black woman being in these foreign countries they've never they don't what what their idea of what a black woman is supposed to be is a little skewed like funny story when i was um when i was traveling i in the i in those five countries i was traveling it, they're all predominantly asian countries and me being this five nine at the time i had my, my real hair out i had this huge afro you know i'm like kind of you know curvy i'm just really i'm i'm a i feel like i have a presence and i next to these people you know i feel like they've never they've never seen someone like myself and of course i'm in the military you know they knew i was in the military so the idea of what they think a black woman is it wasn't me you know they I got called Rihanna you know I got called Beyonce you know thank you thank you but you know everything they see is like I said on television you know they the the people who project themselves on these social media and like on the internet and you know the media that's what they think and when they see you in real life they don't expect it um, I had one guy come up to me he didn't even he couldn't even, he was I think he spoke Portuguese but he didn't even speak English and he came up to me and he just, I had my afro out and he reached up and he just, like he just looked at it like it was the most crazy thing he's ever seen in his entire life. And he just, he just, I, you know, I don't really like to, people touching my hair, but I could see like his fascination, like I couldn't, I couldn't begrudge him this experience. So I let him, you know, touch my hair and he grabbed it and he was just, like staring at it and I wish I could have taken a picture of his face but it was a, it was so funny um when I was in Vietnam uh some of the women on the street they stopped me and they were like Obama Obama and I was like I, I was just kind of like yeah you know yeah because they knew we we're American and um another one of them was like you you look like Obama and she was like pointing to her hand like you look like Obama you Obama's family and I'm like, <laughs> I was laughing. I'm like, yeah, you know, we're both black. But, you know, it was just funny because, like I said, I guess they never, they just, they didn't know. They didn't know. And that's kind of makes it funny. So being abroad, you just kind of, you get used. Oh, and the staring. The staring was crazy. When I was like in the Philippines and Vietnam and all of them, they stared. I had people coming up to me taking pictures of my face. Like just, you know, selfies or selfies are so funny but they were run up and just take some of them with sneak pictures and I'm like you know if you ask I'll take a picture with you but they were just so I guess in awe you know and that made it really funny so just being like I said being abroad it excuse me it um it really you it really expands what you think is normal because back in the states you won't see nobody stopping taking pictures of you you won't see anybody questioning like you know oh my god what are you you know like not really but it's just different and it's it's amusing and it's interesting I'm still getting used to it but um yeah what is the thing that keeps you going um in the Navy makeup what um what inspires me to do it all I am constantly improving and I think reminding myself that I have a lot of room to grow as a person and in my talents and my hobbies that really keeps me it, it motivates me um sometimes it gets me down too but most or not I don't say most of the time but a lot of the time it's just like ah, like okay just do it you know just do it <laughs> it just it keeps me it keeps me grounded and it's like okay I know I'm gonna publish my books I know I can help somebody with hair and makeup. I know that I can sell my art. I know that, you know, I can use my voice. So 
at the same, it could be a really positive thing and it could be a really negative thing sometimes. Like, oh, my books are never going to be good enough or my art's never going to be, you know, there's always that negative thing, you know, this devil sitting on your shoulder telling you that you can't do this, you can't do that. But you, of course, you have to remind yourself like, hey, you know, you're here for a reason and fortune cookie moment again, everyone. Like, it just, you really have to remind yourself that you have to keep going. I mean, you have to, you're put in these situations, whether you're in college or the military or working a corporate job, you, you can't give up. You can't give up and you can either make this experience of yours difficult or you can make it fun and just make it a good experience for yourself because ultimately you have to look back and be like, yeah, I'm, I cherish the moment when I'm like 35, 40 and I'm looking back and I'm like, dang, it wasn't that bad. I could have, I, I had no reason to be stressing the way I was. So that's another thing. I look forward to looking back and being like, wow. I was really stressed out for no reason because I made it. So that's a that's kind of like a driving a driving factor, you know, why I keep going. How do you feel about Trump being elected as president? <laughs> I'm not even in the mood to talk about the Mr. Cheeto man. How do you feel about being a black woman now compared to five years ago? Wow. Okay, five years ago, I was being about sixteen years old. Wow. 16 years old and at 16 for I know for a lot of people 16 is like where you wanted to be you know sweet 16 I think I was either like a I think I was like a junior in high school if not junior like late sophomore and I just thought that that was the time of my life you know and like I said again ignorance is bliss I was my main concern was how I was gonna do my hair and how I was going to, what outfit I was going to wear to school because you had to be the flyest in school and I don't know why I thought that because it was just high school but my mindset from 16 years old to 21 has completely changed you know like I I was a people pleaser I back then I really I really cared about what people thought about me I really cared of pleasing about pleasing everyone I really wanted to make everyone happy and I think I learned I have I made a lot of mistakes with you know bad friendships and meeting people who I thought would like help me but just turned out to be using you know using you and I think that's just a that's a that's life you know it's gonna happen and the only good thing to come out of bad things like that is how you learn, you know, how you apply it to the rest of your life. So I just took those bad situations and I turned them and I helped, I used them to help me grow as a person. So I think from 16 to now, my mindset just in general has completely changed. Last question. So what are your plans after the military? Well, as of now, I have about two years left on my contract and I am so looking forward to going home and going to school. I haven't, all I have so far is like a high school education. I've been, you know, I've been in the military. So just, I haven't really had the opportunity to go to school full time. So I'm looking forward to being a full time student. I'm looking forward to seeing how I can apply my military experience with the real world. I'm hoping I can adjust because it's gonna be a big change, but I embrace change. I get I get bored really easily, and right now I'm ready to like do something completely drastic with my life. And I think the safest thing for myself is just going home, going to school, getting a job. I just can't wait to see how how my life is gonna be now that I am when I get out. Of like what twenty? Probably hitting on twenty four. <sighs> 24. Oh my god. So, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to being an adult and being on my grown woman stuff, you know, because I, I still feel like a little kid at heart, but that's good, you know, maintain your youth, okay? Youth, youth on. Um, youth on, who says that? Um, okay, so yeah, I, I think this video is probably going to be really stupid long, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, let me know like what other videos you guys want to see from me. 
let me know you know how you feel about you know everything that's going on I did I did record a video of my makeup right now you can't really I don't think you can really see it in the video but it's a really simple kind of everyday thing I kind of do it when I don't feel like doing something dramatic so I did record this look so just let me know if you guys want me to you know if you guys are like you want it like now or later but thank you for watching um I hope you enjoyed it I hope you took something from this I hope you I hope the mission was accomplished and you officially know a little something, something about girl, you know. Um, that's all I got. So like it, subscribe to it, comment on it, the usual. I'm not going to go on a speech about it, but thanks guys and see ya. <laughs> there was a lizard on my door. Oh my God. Something just fell on my shirt. I don't know. I don't know what that was. I feel like something fell on my shirt. Something definitely. Okay. Count all my blessings. Blessings. My heart still hurts for the world that I know. Like somebody is gonna get mad at this. Um, oh my god, so blah 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 bl